The core base of the Labor Party in Victoria on the left is the CFMEU and the construction sector. Yes. So it's very simple that what happens is nothing over, say, $50 million in building occurs in right. Melbourne in particular without the builder and the developer having cosy and friendly relationships with the union, which means paying into their superannuation funds, their Christmas funds, their redundancy funds, da 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 and you do all the payoffs. Anyone who doesn't do that payoff gets uh, hounded out of Victoria. And, and I can name a number of businesses of, that have left Victoria because they refuse to get involved in the payola. Hmm. Now, the payola is all quite legalised. That's the corruption we're talking about, it's systemic. So it's systemic, so it's built in. So what happens is, of course, the money loops back to the Labor Party and uh, to uh, keep their, their stuff going, and then appropriate developers then get are able to develop. Hmm. And that's been around for a long time, but you see, who, who out anywhere would know that this is going on? I happen to be aware of it, and you can't... It's a bit in the Herald Sun, it's a bit on... Oh, uh, yeah, but, but does it touch anyone, right? They still get their apartments built, all, all oh, the apartments, okay. and everything okay. might be more expensive to build. Um, shopping centres are more expensive to build, da-da-da-da-da-da. That all just gets washed up in the, in, in the rents. Uh, people still go shopping, they still buy their stuff, and no one... No one joins the dots because you don't know. Yeah. Now, what surprised me with the uh, lockdown or with the, with the hotel quarantine stuff was the discovery that this level of legalised corruption, and, which is, becomes inevitably complete corruption of the managerial processes, yes. was alive and well in the health department. Yes. And I wasn't aware of that myself. And this just exploded in front of us, and we could see. And because the, the labour hire company that was, got the job to do the quarantine hotels uh, was, had been banned from the government uh, authorised list of labour hire companies. Mm. Not only weren't on it, had been banned. Mm. And uh, the woman who was put in charge, the bureaucrat who was put in charge of getting this organised, didn't even look, but she was given basically instructions. And so she just did what she was told. And so the consequence of that was the, the, uh, um, the, 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 the problems in the hotel quarantine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and we, we know the story that happens there. But still, who understands that? I'd, I read the 556 pages of the code inquiry. I did a 20,000 word analysis of the whole thing. Who else is stupid enough to go <laughs> and do that? In other words, people don't see the connections. They don't draw the dots. And this is the brilliance of, what, of, of what's been going on with the Labor Party and how they manage the whole thing. So what you've got is this systemic corruption. The Ian Cook thing is just such the obvious. That's an obvious one. Right? But, nobody but seems still, to care. where does it touch it? People, they don't see the connection back to their ordinary life. No, I don't care. And it's, as long as the level crossings are being removed, what the hell's the difference?